10 Worst Smokers in Hollywood History, Here Goes My Vote. Welcome to our countdown of the 10 Worst Smokers in Hollywood History. From iconic legends to beloved stars, we'll explore the heavy smokers whose habits left a significant mark on their lives and careers. Stay tuned as we reveal the most notorious smokers in Tinseltown's golden age. Bette Davis Bette Davis, born on April 5, 1908, in Lowell, Massachusetts, was a Hollywood icon whose heavy smoking habit became a significant part of her on-screen and off-screen persona. Known as the Queen of the Warner Lot, she was the first actor to receive five consecutive Oscar nominations, winning two. Davis is remembered for her strong belief in portraying realism in her films. When her characters were smokers, she insisted on accurately depicting their habits by having lit cigarettes in her hands throughout the entire movie, mirroring the behavior of real-life smokers. Davis smoked around four packs of Vanguard cigarettes per day and claimed she couldn't go more than 10 minutes without lighting up. Despite this, she only smoked in about a quarter of her movies and was never a spokesperson for any cigarette brand. Her addiction was so severe that even her dentist couldn't deter her. She would smoke in the waiting room and even in the dental chair. Cigarette smoking played important roles in some of her movies, helping her create memorable characters. Her dedication to realism meant she often smoked heavily on screen, contributing to her image as a tough, no-nonsense actress. Surprisingly, despite her excessive smoking, she managed to live a long life without being affected by smoking-related diseases. She eventually passed away from breast cancer on October 6, 1989, at the age of 81. Reports suggest that she continued smoking around 100 cigarettes daily until her death, underscoring the depth of her addiction. Her commitment to her craft and her distinctive screen presence have left a lasting legacy in Hollywood. Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart, born on December 25, 1899 in New York City, was a legendary actor who became synonymous with the image of the tough, cool leading man. He was influential in making smoking look cool on screen, a habit that he maintained both in his roles and in real life. Bogart smoked two packs of cigarettes daily and was also known to be a heavy drinker, which significantly impacted his health. His on-screen relationship with cigarettes had a fascinating origin. In the early days of filmmaking, screenplays often contained long monologues with fewer physical directions. During one such shoot, Bogart expressed his boredom to the director and suggested incorporating smoking into the scene to break up the monotony and add depth to his performance. This clever suggestion captivated the audience's attention, and Bogart started smoking in every film, creating a strong association between his cool, detached characters and cigarettes. His on-screen persona became so iconic that cigarettes were popularly known as bogeys, Unfortunately, Bogart's smoking habit had devastating consequences. He experienced constant coughing due to smoking and memory loss from excessive drinking. Despite his fame and success, Bogart put off seeking medical attention for his cough and other health issues until 1956. It was then revealed that he had developed esophageal cancer, a direct result of his long-standing smoking habit. Bogart's remarkable career was tragically cut short when he passed away on January 14, 1957, at the age of 57. His legacy as a Hollywood legend endures, but his untimely demise serves as a stark reminder of the severe health risks associated with smoking. Errol Flynn Errol Flynn, born on June 20, 1909, in Hobart, Tasmania, was a swashbuckling actor who became a Hollywood legend in the 1930s and 1940s. Known for his roles in classics like The Adventures of Robin Hood, The Charge of the Light Brigade, and The Private Lives of Elizabeth and Essex, Flynn's charisma and on-screen heroics made him a household name. However, his off-screen life was marked by excessive indulgence in alcohol, drugs, and cigarettes, which significantly impacted his health and career. Flynn's addiction to alcohol was legendary. 
He and his roommate, actor David Niven, lived in a house they nicknamed Cirrhosis by the Sea, where they hosted wild parties. Flynn was known for his ability to consume vast quantities of alcohol and even devised a clever plan to inject vodka into oranges to smuggle alcohol onto movie sets where it was prohibited. His excessive drinking was often paired with his smoking habit, further deteriorating his health. Flynn also struggled with an addiction to opium, which, combined with his other vices, began to affect his appearance and performance. His personal life was equally tumultuous. Flynn had a reputation for romantic relationships and was rumored to have an exceptionally large phallus with tales of him playing the piano with it at parties. Despite being married three times, he never found true happiness and had a troubling attraction to much younger women. In 1942, he faced allegations of statutory rape involving two teenage girls, although he was acquitted with the support of Warner Brothers' legal team. However, his career never fully recovered from the scandal. In the late 1940s, Flynn's health began to decline rapidly due to his excessive lifestyle. Although he experienced a brief resurgence in the 1950s, portraying drunken characters in films, his body couldn't withstand the years of abuse. Tragically, on October 14, 1959, at the age of 50, Flynn suffered a heart attack while staying at Dr. Grant Gould's apartment in Vancouver, Canada. The autopsy revealed that Flynn's body appeared to belong to a 75-year-old man with a severely damaged liver, indicating he likely had only a few months left to live. Congratulations on completing 1-3 of this exploration journey. If you enjoyed this video, please comment 1, otherwise comment 0. We will use this feedback to evaluate and improve our content. Thank you. Sammy Davis Jr. Sammy Davis Jr., born on December 8, 1925, in Harlem, New York City, was a multi-talented entertainer known for his singing, dancing, and acting. As a prominent member of the Rat Pack, alongside Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin, Davis became a symbol of cool, but his personal habits, particularly smoking, had a detrimental impact on his health and career. The Rat Pack was famous for their image of indulgence in vices like drinking, womanizing, and smoking. While much of their on-stage drinking was a performance, the smoking was very real, and Davis was particularly known for his smoking habit. He often smoked on stage, a risky endeavor for anyone's health, but especially harmful for a singer. One of his signature moves involved taking a puff during a song and exhaling the smoke as he sang the next note, which may have looked cool but had negative consequences for his well-being. Davis's friend and fellow singer Nat King Cole once warned him about the damage smoking could cause to his vocal cords, explaining that the intense heat from the cigarette smoke was harmful. Unfortunately, Davis did not heed this advice. In the 1980s, when he began experiencing vocal issues, his manager took him to see a throat specialist. The specialist confirmed that Cole was right. Singing while smoking had caused inflamed nodules on Davis's vocal cords, severely affecting his ability to perform. Despite these health issues, Davis continued to perform and maintain his image as a dynamic entertainer. However, his smoking habit ultimately contributed to his health decline. Sammy Davis Jr. passed away on May 16, 1990, at the age of 64, due to complications from throat cancer. Rod Serling Rod Serling, born on December 25, 1924, in Syracuse, New York, was a visionary writer and producer best known for creating the iconic television series The Twilight Zone. His profound impact on the science fiction genre and his talent for blending social commentary with storytelling made him a creative genius in Hollywood. However, Serling's life was also marked by personal struggles, including a heavy smoking habit that contributed to his untimely death. Serling's career took off with the success of The Twilight Zone, a show that has become a cultural landmark for its imaginative plots and thought-provoking themes. Despite this tremendous success, Serling never found contentment within himself. Plagued by self-doubt, 
He turned to various vices, including heavy drinking and smoking, to cope with his internal struggles. His smoking habit was particularly severe. Serling consumed four packs of cigarettes each day. After the Twilight Zone concluded, Serling faced the daunting task of replicating the triumph of his masterpiece. This pressure intensified his drinking and smoking as he struggled to make a successful comeback. He drifted from one project to another and occasionally took on acting roles, but his self-doubt and self-loathing persisted. To cope, Serling resorted to alcohol and cigarettes as forms of self-medication. In 1975, Serling's health took a significant turn for the worse when he had to undergo bypass surgery due to a clogged artery, a direct consequence of his years of smoking. Tragically, during the operation, Serling's heart gave out, unable to withstand the strain. He passed away on June 28, 1975, at the age of 50. His heart, ravaged by years of self-inflicted damage, simply couldn't endure the demanding procedure. Jackie Gleason Jackie Gleason, born on February 26, 1916 in Brooklyn, New York, was an American comedian, actor, and musician best known for his role as Ralph Cramden in the classic television series The Honeymooners. Gleason's larger-than-life personality and comic genius made him a beloved figure in American entertainment. However, his personal life was marked by excesses that significantly impacted his health. Gleason's immense talent was matched by his voracious appetite for food and drink. Weighing between 230 and 330 pounds, he often indulged in multiple meals in a single sitting, with a grand finale of devouring a gallon of ice cream. His insatiable hunger left onlookers astounded. Beyond his eating habits, Gleason had a profound fondness for alcohol, guzzling whiskey as if it were water. A scotch on the rocks was his preferred drink, and he rarely found himself sober. This fondness for alcohol was complemented by his heavy smoking habit. Gleason was a chain smoker, effortlessly burning through five packs of cigarettes daily. Gleason's indulgent lifestyle extended beyond food and drink. His size and detrimental habits made mobility a considerable challenge. Tragically, these habits also took a toll on his libido, with Gleason famously remarking, sex for a fat man is much ado about puffing, emphasizing how his excessive lifestyle impacted every aspect of his life. Despite these challenges, Gleason's talent and charisma continued to shine through his performances. Jackie Gleason's health began to deteriorate due to his excessive lifestyle. He succumbed to colon cancer on June 24, 1987, at the age of 71. His indulgent habits had caught up with him, and he left behind a legacy of laughter and a cautionary tale of the dangers of excess. Yul Brynner Yul Brynner, born on July 11, 1920, in Vladivostok, Russia, was a charismatic actor known for his commanding presence on both the silver screen and the Broadway stage. His most iconic role was that of King Monkut in the musical The King and I, for which he won an Academy Award and a Tony Award. However, Brynner's life was also marked by a heavy smoking habit that ultimately led to his tragic death. Brynner's career spanned over four decades, and he became a Hollywood legend with memorable roles in films such as The Ten Commandments, The Magnificent Seven, and Westworld. His distinct bald look and intense performances captivated audiences worldwide. Despite his professional success, Brynner struggled with a severe addiction to cigarettes. He smoked an astonishing five packs of cigarettes each day, a habit that he maintained throughout his life. The consequences of Brynner's smoking caught up with him in the form of lung cancer. Despite his illness, Brynner continued to work and even embarked on a poignant endeavor before his death. He filmed a commercial for the American Cancer Society, which aired posthumously. In this eerie and impactful advertisement, Brynner's voice, raspy and frail, implored viewers not to follow in his footsteps. He acknowledged the commercial would air after his death emphasizing the urgency of his plea. His haunting message was, Now that I'm gone, don't smoke. Whatever you do, just don't smoke. 
Yul Brynner passed away on October 10, 1985 at the age of 65 in New York City. His transformation from a towering figure of health to a mere shadow consumed by lung cancer bore the weight of his addiction. His powerful anti-smoking message left a lasting impact, turning his personal tragedy into a cautionary tale for others. Clark Gable Clark Gable, born on February 1, 1901, in Cadiz, Ohio, was a Hollywood legend and one of the most iconic actors of the golden age of cinema. Known as the King of Hollywood, Gable's charm and rugged masculinity made him a beloved figure in films such as Gone with the Wind, It Happened One Night, and Mutiny on the Bounty. However, his personal life was marred by a heavy smoking habit that significantly impacted his health. Gable's portrayal of Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind cemented his status as a leading man, earning him an Academy Award nomination. His career was illustrious, with numerous successful films and accolades. Despite his professional achievements, Gable's personal life was fraught with challenges, including a severe addiction to cigarettes. He smoked three packs of unfiltered cigarettes daily for over 30 years, along with cigars and copious bowls of pipe tobacco. During World War II, Gable's fame was at its peak. Yet he chose to serve his country by joining the U.S. Army Air Forces. He rose to the rank of captain and flew on five combat missions, earning the Distinguished Flying Cross and the Air Medal. His wartime service added to his legendary status, even catching the attention of Adolf Hitler, who reportedly offered a reward for Gable's capture. However, Gable's heavy smoking took a severe toll on his health. Despite his strong persona, he began to experience health issues related to his smoking habit. On November 16, 1960, Gable succumbed to his fourth heart attack, passing away at the age of 59 in Los Angeles. His heart attacks were directly linked to his decades-long smoking habit, which had ravaged his health. Spencer Tracy Spencer Tracy, born on April 5, 1900, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, was a highly acclaimed actor known for his versatile performances and naturalistic style. He won two Academy Awards for Best Actor and starred in classics like Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, Inherit the Wind, and Judgment at Nuremberg. Tracy's extraordinary talent and dedication to his craft made him one of Hollywood's most respected actors, but his personal life was marred by struggles with alcohol, smoking, and health issues. Tracy's career in Hollywood spanned over three decades, during which he became renowned for his powerful and authentic performances. Despite his professional success, Tracy battled several personal demons. He was a chain smoker and a heavy drinker, habits that began to take a serious toll on his health as he aged. In addition to his struggles with alcohol and cigarettes, Tracy relied on pills and dealt with excess weight, further exacerbating his health problems. As he reached his 60s, the consequences of Tracy's indulgent lifestyle became increasingly apparent. On July 21, 1963, he was rushed to the hospital due to severe breathlessness, a clear sign that his health was in critical condition. In July 1965, Tracy received a grave diagnosis of hypertensive heart disease, which cast a shadow over his remaining years. Despite his declining health, Tracy continued to work, driven by his passion for acting and his dedication to his craft. During this difficult period, Tracy found solace and support in his longtime companion, Catherine Hepburn. Their extraordinary connection and Hepburn's unwavering love provided him with the strength to persevere through his health challenges. Confined to his home, Tracy's last days were marked by his declining health and the comforting presence of Hepburn by his side. Spencer Tracy passed away on June 10, 1967, at the age of 67, due to a heart attack. His life was a testament to the incredible talent and resilience he brought to his work, despite the personal struggles that plagued him. Tracy's legacy as one of Hollywood's greatest actors endures, and his performances continue to inspire and captivate audiences. John Wayne John Wayne 
Born Marion Robert Morrison on May 26, 1907 in Winterset, Iowa, was an American film icon whose career spanned more than four decades. Known for his roles in over 170 films, including classics like Stagecoach, The Searchers, and True Grit, Wayne became the quintessential cowboy and soldier in Hollywood, earning him the title of The Duke. Despite his immense success and enduring legacy, Wayne's personal life was marked by habits that ultimately led to his untimely death. Standing at an impressive six foot four and weighing 225 pounds, Wayne's imposing stature and rugged demeanor made him the perfect fit for his iconic roles. However, behind this tough exterior, Wayne struggled with several health issues exacerbated by his lifestyle choices. He battled weight problems, lacked physical fitness, and indulged heavily in both alcohol and tobacco. From his high school years, Wayne was a chain smoker, consuming cigarettes from morning till night and escalating his habit to an astonishing seven packs of unfiltered camels each day. Wayne's excessive smoking habit had severe repercussions on his health. In 1964, he underwent surgery to remove most of his left lung due to the detrimental effects of tobacco. Despite this serious warning, Wayne continued to smoke, a decision that would further compromise his health. His battle with smoking was compounded by his heavy alcohol consumption, which often turned him into an unpleasant personality as the day progressed. John Wayne's career continued to flourish despite his health issues, with him remaining one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood for much of his life. However, his excessive lifestyle eventually caught up with him. On June 11, 1979, Wayne succumbed to complications from stomach cancer at the age of 72. His death was a significant loss to the film industry, but his legacy as one of Hollywood's greatest actors endures. Thank you all for being among those who stayed till the end of the video. Comment too, so we can see you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to The Famous People channel for more insightful content. We appreciate your participation and look forward to sharing more engaging stories with you in our upcoming videos. Goodbye.